Hi guys, we're gonna be talking about the distributive property. We have basically talked about all the different math properties, but I specifically left out the distributive property because I wanted to talk about this one-on-one. -on -one. We're gonna be using this a lot in this unit. You'll see it a lot in your ma other math classes. First of all, let's look at the definition of a distributive property. It states that if you multiply a sum by a sum by a number, you will get the same results if you multiply each dividend by that number and then add the products. For example, I've just used numbers down here where I have five and notice that it's on, right on the outside of the parentheses. That means it's being multiplied to whatever two plus seven is. If I add two plus seven, because I'm gonna use PEMDAS, that's going to be nine, and five times nine is gonna to equal to 45. Let's take this and just do it exactly um, by using distributive property. I'm gonna multiply five times two. I'm gonna add, notice I'm using the same uh, operation symbol as I have inside the parentheses. Then I'm gonna add five times seven. I've, you've, I've often told uh, other classes, don't forget, when the babies leave the house, mama's gonna kiss all of her babies. So five has got to be distributed among everything inside that parentheses. So now I have five times two, plus five times seven. I know five times two is 10, and five times seven is 35. And when I add 10 to 35, I get 45. So you can see by this example of my, uh, these two problems that I'm gonna get the same answer. Let's look at it in terms of area, okay? We're gonna do some examples with this. A swimming pool has a shallow end and a deep end. Find the surface area of the pool. Surface area means the top of it. The deep end is eight by five, and the shallow end is gonna be 10 yards, and I also know that if this is gonna be eight yards, that's also gonna be eight yards. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say eight, and I'm gonna add the five yards plus the 10 yards, and that should be the two missing sides that I'm missing here. Now, I'm gonna multiply eight times five, and I usually do the little symbols like so because I'm gonna share the eight with both five and 10. I'm gonna multiply eight times five, and I'm gonna multiply eight times 10. And when I do this, I know that eight times five is 45. I'm sorry, it's 40. Eight times five is 40. Eight times 10 is 80, and I know that eight 80 times 40 is going to give me 120 square yards. If I wanted to, I could say, what is five plus 10? That's 15, and I know that 15 times eight is going to give us 120 yards square. Now we're gonna look at this in another way. Instead of looking at it as a pool, we're gonna write the expression that shows how to find the area of a rectangle using distributive property. So we're gonna do the same thing. Nine is my width. I've got a width of 20 yards here and another width, if I cut this in two, by five yards. So this is gonna be 90 times 20 plus the five on that side. And I'm gonna say 90 times 20 because I've got to share, look at my, uh, nine is gonna be the mama and she's gonna kiss off her babies. Nine times five. Okay, I know that nine times 20 is gonna be 180, plus I'm using the same symbol as I did here in the center of my, um, of my quantity of plus and plus. Nine times five is gonna be 45, and I know that 180 plus 45 is going to give me 125. So I know that this whole entire surface area or the area of the top of that rectangle is going to be 125 square yards, okay? So we're looking at it as just using it for area because we've worked with area formulas before. And I want you to look at it this way. Now we don't have something sitting up here, okay? So we're gonna have to figure that out. I know that I've got a width of six and this rectangle has a length of four and this rectangle has a length of eight. But if I slide them together, it's all one and the same. So six is going to be the thing that they have in common as far as their width. So it's gonna be six yards. I know that the length of this one is gonna be four yards plus the length of this one is gonna be eight yards. 
So I could easily have said four plus eight is 12 and 12 times six and get it that way. But I'm also gonna look at it and say, I need to share them with each one. So I'm going to take it and I'm gonna share the six with multiplying it times the four and share the six by multiplying it times the eight because the six on the outside of a, of a uh, parentheses means I'm multiplying. So I'm gonna say six times four plus, here's the same sign inside the parentheses, six times eight. And I know that six times four is 24, plus six times eight is 48. So when I add them together, I am going to get 72 yards squared. If I added these together and say 12 times six, which this is 12 times six, I would still get 72 yards squared. All right, let's do another one here where I have a five. I don't know the length of this particular small box or square or rectangle, but I do know this one. So we're gonna start with X, which is going to be our variable. So we're gonna do the very same thing. They both share a width of five yards. So we're gonna put the five here. I don't know what this is, but I can still put the X down as the variable that the number represents. And this one is 10 yards. Now, again, I want to share the five by multiplying it times everything inside the parentheses. So I'm going to say five times X plus, kept the same side inside the parentheses, five times 10. Five times X is going to give me just plain old five X. I can't multiply those together any more than that. And I know that five times 10 is going to give me a plus 50. So my answer is really going to be 50, 5x plus 50. Now you ask yourself, why can't you find the sum? The reason why I cannot find the sum of these, all of this together to give you a, a numerical answer for the area is because I don't know what x is. x can be a number of things. They could tell me x is 4, x is 2, x is 3, or whatever. And that is how we're going to be using x's and variables when we're looking at different types of problems. So anything could be in place of that x. This is another one where I've got a 3 on the outside. I've got another x because I do not know the number that goes in this spot but I do know that this length is six. So I'm gonna say three times X plus six, three times X, because this three has got to be multiplied and shared to everything inside the parentheses. Don't forget, mama has to kiss all of her babies. If she kisses X as he goes out the house, but doesn't kiss six, six is gonna be sad all day. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say three times six. So three is being distributed among everything inside that parentheses. So now I've got three times X is just gonna be three X plus three times six is gonna be 18. So my answer is actually gonna be three X plus 18. Again, why can't we find the sum? Because we do not know what the value of X is. So we're going to show it as three X because if they tell me X is 10, I could plug it in here and say three times 10 is 30 and 30 plus 18, I could then give you a sum of 48. Now let's try these by writing the equivalent expressions for each. Let's do it without using area. Same thing, I've got to take the three and distribute it to everything inside of here. I'm gonna say three times X. I'm gonna use the plus symbol because of my positive, I'm, I'm adding on the inside, three times seven. I know that three times X can only be expressed as three X plus three times seven is 21. And that is as far as I can go with that expression. So if I wanted to write the equivalent uh, expression for each, this would be equivalent to the three times X plus seven. I'm gonna go ahead and have you pause the video and go back and do these two so you get and see if you get the right answer and turn it back on and then we'll go back over and find the answer and see if you did it right and where you made, might have made a mistake. All right, let's look at two times X. Two is being distributed among everything inside the parentheses. So this is gonna be two times X plus, this is the sign I have, two times three is gonna be two times three. So two times X is nothing more than two X 
plus 2 times 3 is going to give me 6. So that will be equivalent times to 2 times the quantity of x plus 3. If I have 4, let's go ahead and make this a minus. I didn't put a minus sign in there, but I can put a minus. And I want to do this because I want you to see how this works. If I have 4 times x, don't forget, 4 has to be distributed times everything. I'm going to say 4 times x. Now, instead of a plus, I'm going to put a minus. So I'm going to put a minus 4 times 5. Okay, That 4 was distributed among everything in there. This minus represents the minus sign inside of the parentheses. So I know 4x is nothing more than just 4x minus. I know that 4 times 5 is going to be 20. So I know that 4x minus 20 is going to be the same expression as 4 times the quantity of x minus 5. We'll be doing more of these in class and a lot during this unit.